This conference will now be, this conference will now be recorded. So in the previous session, uh, we were discussing about web application structure. So basically, uh, any user who is trying to access would be sending the request to web server. Web server at the back end then communicates with specific app server which interacts with your backend database. So in, in this all communication that goes through the client from client to the servers server segment. There are various protocols which come into picture. HTTP is one of the major important protocols which we will be playing around throughout our ASM. So when we started talking about HTTP, we had discussed about the HTTP request and response structure. So there are various components in here like when you access any specific website you start with the protocol identifier then resource name protocol identifier is what specifies what protocol you are using to fetch the resource on the web it could be like HTTP, HTTPS, FTP and a source name is the complete URL name that you are trying to access. This resource name is again broken down into various components like host name, file name, request object query string and whenever you are processing or analyzing these requests you will come across various methods which HTTP uses by default ASM would allow or accept only these three methods the HTTP methods that we are talking about so by default it will allow get head and post get is basically used to retrieve the objects which are identified by the request URI so uh, might be in a request you will see something like get slash index.html HTTP 1.1 like this and head is a request which is quite critical to get but without the response body this method is basically useful in retrieving the information writing in the response headers without having to actually transport the uh, content without having to to transport the web page itself and then post method it requests that the server will accept the data which is enclosed in your request it could be anything like uh, you are sending your uh, username and password details So whenever you are um, analyzing these get requests, uh, post requests, how ASM actually considers this is, it will read each and every header component and see whether this is part of your security policy. So there can be headers like referer header 
which says that whenever you are trying to request a file, let's say I type browse dot PHP and referral is indicating as option.fi.com. So this request was or generated from the initial referrer page, which is this page. Then you might find headers like accept language. Say English. What is the accept encoding method? gzip or deflate these are all part of your http request components you'll find details like user agent say mozilla you'll find header as host which specifies what site are you trying to access you'll find header as connection this connection header is specially used to ensure that in, in a single TCP connection, we are sending multiple requests. So we, we, uh, we are just not closing the, mm, the TCP connection as soon as we have sent only one request. Okay, uh, Vinita, I have uh, one, one question over here like uh, um, for HTTP uh, 1.1.0, uh, the keep alive is not default. So, what we can do to have the uh, session, like the connection, to be keep alive, not to be closed this, from the this server? Is, this is the header which is uh, added in HTTP 1.0. So we just have to add the I header in, in it. Yes. Yes. Okay. By default, 1.1 will have persistent connections right so this persistent connectivity is supported in 1.1 http 1.1 using this header uh, and this comes as a default feature in 1.1 okay now few more headers which you can see is like the date a date and timestamp of when the HTTP message was created or you can find header as transfer encoding it informs the receiver or maybe the client you can say of what encoding was performed on the HTTP me message then you uh, when you are trying to investigate the response headers you might find also as content type Descri it basically describes the data type that is being sent in the message what is the content length provides the length of the body expires which indicates after what time the resource may no longer be valid it also indicates uh, has a header called last modified which is an indication of the date and time when was the last change to the entity and after that you have various response codes hundred series 200 300 400 500 so how actually asm parses these is it will try to inspect each and every component of this specific request and see 
whether the request that you are trying to access is this valid or not is this something which is allowed or not it can mm, you know scan each parameter each uri each header for any known attacks so whatever request it is trying to analyze are being sent from the client client can be an attacker so when an attacker tries to send malicious request to the application he might modify the various components of these headers so these headers are what we will be playing around throughout the asm now there are um, various ways in which uh, we can analyze these requests as i had initially mentioned you would use a tool called as fiddler to modify the components just to view the components you can have developer tools or uh, tool as wireshark now um, before we get into fiddler uh, let's discuss about web application vulnerabilities so there is a specific term which is called as owasp top 10 which means this is this basically stands for open web application security project this is a combination of top 10 most critical web application security risks so we will be dealing across these vulnerabilities and how we can mitigate those vulnerabilities using our asm so let's talk a bit about these application vulnerabilities first being broken authentication and session management authentication is but the process of verifying the identity of an individual beat any application you consider authentication is a critical aspect and this is what is being used sometimes or exploited by the attackers they use uh, various things like uh, let's say forget my password uh, account update time different functionalities of authentication which are being integrated within the application so uh, for example session management me um, mechanisms like uh, cookies session ids tokens which are all part of your web application itself if these are not secure attacker basically make use of these components and hijack a session and it would assume a user's identity so, uh, for example let's say i try to access http test.com/sale sale items 
which has again a session id j session id is equal to to a b x, x y z and destination equal to hawaii let's assume the applications timeouts are not set properly and you uh, you are a user who is using a public computer you access the application and instead of you know clicking on logout you just simply close the browser and walk away now attacker could use the same browser an hour later and that browser is still authenticated to the application why because the application timeout is not set so he can make use of that and bypass the authentication or hijack a specific session so this is what we call as broken authentication and session management so you need to ensure that um, passwords should be stored in an encrypted form uh, so yeah. we we need uh, in, in that case uh, it it could be the case uh, like we just uh, logged in in, in our uh, gmail account and we just close the browser instead of uh, logging off like logging out of, from the uh, gmail yes and so someone accessing if, the same yeah so if uh, on the server end the application timeout is not configured correctly so for example if the server does not see the request from on this application from a specific user for let's say 10 minutes so it will automatically log out his session. End the session okay yeah it will automatically end the session if that does not happen any user who has access to that system can again retry and access the same application without even being authenticated so he might get access to your application right okay so we need to ensure our passwords are stored in encrypted or hashed form we need to encrypt the entire login session and we need to even enforce the login page timeouts so how asm achieves this is like uh, enforcing unique login page enforcing login page timeouts defining the application flow enforcement using the cookies and protect those cookies then we have something called as parameter tampering this parameter tampering can occur when you are trying to modify a specific parameter and you you have access to something which you ideally shouldn't have for example you are trying to access the account equal to user 1 so this you have already logged in to your application and you are seeing the details about this parameter which has a value of user 1 so i know that this is a parameter what i am trying to do is 
let's say this value I will modify it to let's say star sorry after app let's say you have account info okay let me read type this example.com slash app count cct equal to user one so you are trying to modify the value of this parameter and instead of user one in the browser let's say you just type star so your web server can respond back with the data of all the various users which are available on your uh, on on the web server so that is something which has to be avoided the attacker basically concentrates on modifying the value of parameter and get access to various other data which ideally he shouldn't have access so how asm will try to mitigate this is it will try to check the allowed characters in the parameter name what is the malicious pattern in it what query string and what data lengths are being sent okay then the other method is cookie tampering so whenever you uh, hear this term cookie right uh, cookie is nothing but a string of text which is sent by the web server it is something like a name and value pair so you can try to manipulate the cookies at your client end and send it to your web server so these cookies basically are a way of implementing stateful experience in which the web server remembers you so if you have a specific preferences so based on your cookies which are present in the request it sends or processes your specific request in that way so cookies can differentiate between users can be used for authentication for tracking so this cookies are basically set by the server using set cookie header and this cookie manipulation is again used for the purpose of session hijacking in which um, the attacker can try to manipulate the value of uh, cookie and get access to a different session so uh, how asm mitigates this is it will try to verify the cookies which are sent by web server to the client are not el altered so uh, let's say the cookie is a b c d to one so what asm would do is asm will send its own cookie apart from this cookie it will create a hash of this cookie and a new cookie will be sent along with this let's say ts equal to 50 which is nothing but a hash value corresponding to this cookie so that's what that's how it knows that whenever this cookie is being modified this hash will not match and that is when asm will detect that okay somebody has tried to play around the cookies so i have to block this cookie tampering you can even validate the domain cookies so this cookie is corresponding to that domain then another way or 
another violation the vulnerability we can call this as a sensitive data exposure so whenever i uh, or you hear this term sensitive data this can be anything like your credit card information your user ids for um, us people it might be social security number or any other authentication credentials so if a web application does not protect this sensitive data or for some reason it is trying to send this data in a blank plain manner the attacker if he gets hold of that packet he can retrieve all this crucial information and perform any fraud using it identity thefts or it could be any other crimes so asm will mitigate this specific attack by masking the values so uh, even you as administrator right you are sitting at f5 should not be able to see uh, if server is trying to send you the you credit card information so this should not be visible in logs in a plain manner plain text format then the next violation is forceful browsing when i say forceful browsing is uh, it could be something like you know okay um, that a specific application um, is maintained or is developed on a specific platform maybe he is using apache uh, linux uh, which have some custom folders so a normal user let's say he is trying to access public for some reason if the user is trying to access my site.com slash private this file should not have been exposed to the internet so when i am trying to forcefully browse through this application and see whether this file exist or not maybe i know that i as a user or a attacker know that okay um, linux servers store the password file on on this location so i try to browse forcefully on that website i try to browse let's say etc slash pass wd so that is what is called as forceful browsing so to ensure that application is not vulnerable to this we um, enforce login pages uh, we enforce the parameter values we deploy authentication and authorization policies so we can define what file types are allowed what urls are allowed what is the accu accurate parameter values then another violation which comes in to picture is hidden field manipulation so usually you know in many applications uh, especially like uh, html form fields they hold something related to system passwords or uh, you know merchandise pricing 
so you might have seen uh, you, when on an e-commerce application you are trying to buy something so basically that price tag let's say price equal to 100 or maybe let's say 10,000 is being sent to the client as when you select that product that this price as a parameter and this which is the uh, correct value on on its website is being sent as a hidden field to the client machine so now the attacker would try to manipulate to this field he will try to modify let's say price equal to one rupee and then he sends back with your credit card information you have entered your credit card say one two three four five and you buy that specific product let's say the product which you are trying to buy is camera so by manipulating this hidden field you are trying to buy that same product at a lesser price So we need to verify that authorization is applied to all the reference objects. We can enforce the dynamic parameters to ensure that the values are not changing. Then another attack is security. misconfiguration you know security misconfiguration can happen at any level it could be like uh, application level including like platform what platform is being used what server is being used what app server is being used what is the framework which is being used? You know, uh, usually we have a common tendency that, okay, um, for some reason, if I've deployed this server and this has a default password, like I know for Linux or for maybe Apache, the default uh, login ID is admin admin. So if I as an administrator do not change this, then this becomes a problem. Why? Because attacker, if he for some in some way, if he found out that my web server is based on Apache, so he might try to go to log into the web server through its main login page using this ID. He can try a default configuration and gain unauthorized access to the system so we need to ensure that all the requests which are being sent or um, all our servers are patched up they are not vulnerable uh, we are not using if you are using a specific product be it linux be it apache so the version which we have implemented in in our environment is not vulnerable then we have denial of service This DOS attacks basically seek to consume the computing power, the bandwidth, unless and until the service is no longer available. So it is targeted to send multiple requests to your web server, let's say. It is trying to send all these SYN packets from various sources. To your web server and web server assumes that these are all genuine requests and allocate some resources 
to each request. But after that, when it responds back with the SYNAC, no acknowledgement is being sent by the client. So this way it keeps on piling up on the server itself. And what another DOS attack which uh, attacker can perform could be related to the network bandwidth. So it could send a burst of data uh, to the server so that if let's say um, this server can handle only um, 1 million connections per second. So user might try to send more he and heavy amount of data towards this server. And then we have cross site scripting. Cross site scripting is again of two types. So in this what happens is let's say this is your client machine connect to your web server app server database server I am an attacker okay I send a one time script to the web server to maybe fetch some important or critical data from from the database and that data is being sent back to the client this is just one time i run script on on my web server and fetch some critical data from the web server now instead of this what i can do is Let's consider an another victim. This is a hacker. He will try to inject a specific script onto the database. So next time what happens is whenever a new victim try, uh, or a new user tries to access this application, this script is injected in the response to this victim's machine and the uh, script is then run or that malicious code runs on the client system and could send critical data corresponding to this user to the hacker. Then you have injection attacks so in injection attack we basically try to um, one of the most common and top ranked vulnerability is a sql injection attack so in in this uh, sql usually uses commands like let's say select user underscore id from users where username equal to admin and password equal to say test this is one of the queries which is usually sent to the database server to retrieve the details of this user admin and the one as with the password password as test now if i want to perform if i am an attacker i want to perform a sql injection i might instead of typing this 
or sending this kind of request i might send select star from users where username is equal to admin or one equal to one so this will always be true so what we have done is we have modified the original clause modified the where clause where the or and set it in such a way that it is always true so when database receives this request and runs it it will see that the user value is admin or one equal to one so one equal to one will always be true so database will actually re return every record in the users table so instead of sending a uh, in this specific case the server the database server will respond back with one specific option or one one specific entry but in this specific case what would happen is since the request is always valid or, or always true it will fetch all the database contents and send it back in the response so we basically um, try to analyze or understand these sql injection attacks by seeing each component which is being sent in the request so if i see uh, somewhere in the request one equal to one i will consider that as an attack and i will try to mitigate this using my asm so this was all about uh, the various vulnerabilities that we'll be discussing and uh, in the next session we'll be starting with hands on lab to see how this exploitation we can perform on our application so uh, um, we need uh, the os and is the uh, recent ones right recent uh, uh, you, your voice is too low the os10 is uh, the recent uh, vulnerabilities like it keeps changing uh, yes it keeps changing so the recent one is os10 2017 yes okay and uh, what about the older ones so, like have you already fixed that and we don't need to uh, look into th those again is it no no it's not like that uh, we have fixed it uh, the vulnerabilities yeah. still exist but okay. this specific project is released based on how critical they are or um the majority of the, the uh, attacks majority yeah. of attacks which occur are around these at okay so that is Got how it. these this specific report is published so uh, in the next section we will start exploiting these vulnerabilities we will mm -hmm. uh, try to analyze or modify the request and see how our uh, f5 behaves or how it actually receives or understands the request whether this is similar to an attack and what logs will it generate okay okay yep. okay then. thank you thank you guys thank you bye bye thank you.